Hey golf people, big, big, big day here on the channel. I've got a new club inside my golf bag. One's coming out, one's going in. It's the same brand and I'll show you why I made the switch here on today's episode. All right, so first, what is coming out? What is coming out is this Ping G425 three wood. I love this club when I first got it. I don't know what it is. It's not the club. It's the guy swinging the club. I cannot, for the life of me, hit this club off the deck right now. Off the tee, it's okay. Off the deck, I cannot swing it. I don't know what's going on. I loved this club so much because it had a counterbalance shaft, which I thought really suited me. It, uh, it was a very forgiving club, easy to get up in the air. I did all sorts of tests on this channel to find this three wood a couple years ago and I have really enjoyed it, but something's wrong. Something's wrong, and rather than pulling this club out of my bag and topping it like I've done time after time after time, I've just said, forget it, I'm making a switch. I'm making a switch. And this club that I put in my bag came out on the market just about two weeks ago, and I went down to the PGA Tour Superstore, tried it out, and I gotta say, fell in love with it. It's been a fairway finder for me since I've had it. I'm also able to hit it off the deck a lot more consistently than I have been doing with my three wood. Now it doesn't go quite as far, but it's more consistent. And for that reason, I'm putting this one in the bag, guys. This is the new Ping I-230 crossover. It's basically a hybrid driving iron. To me, it's a lot better off the deck than even something like the TaylorMade Stealth, UDI, and DHY family. Those are more hybrid looking, like not quite an iron, whereas this, if you saw my review of the Ping i230 irons, this could fit, and it's built to fit within that set, to be that crossover between your irons and your woods. Now the other really cool thing about this club is the adjustability built into it. You can go up or down one and a half degrees. You can also change the lie angle. I myself am one degree upright, so I can actually make that change here in the club alongside the loft. Really versatile club, and what we're gonna do here today is I'm gonna show you what this club does with the stock settings right off the shelf in my simulator here, and then we're gonna turn it up and down to see how those adjustments change the club. Just so you have an idea of the different ball flight characteristics and things this club can do, at least for a mere mortal like me. By the way, if you're a mere mortal as well, good time to hit subscribe. This is the channel where you're going to see someone with a little more of an average swing speed. I'm not hitting the ball 325 yards off the tee. I'm hitting it more like 250, 260, that sort of thing. If that's you, hit subscribe. But without further ado, let's dive into the technology of this and then we are going to actually hit a few shots with it. So this iron is really meant to fit in with the new i230 line of irons, which you might have seen me test out already. If not, here's a link to that video as well. What this thing has in spades is MOI and weight down towards the bottom. So these hollow body designs allow more weight down towards the sole of this club. They've also got the tungsten weight there at the toe of this to give it more weight, as well as a tip weight where the shaft connects into the club itself. Again, all of that meant to allow you to get the ball up in the air a little higher and to allow for more MOI. MOI, moment of inertia, is basically going to be the forgiveness of these clubs. I find this club to be pretty darn forgiving. And again, I'm gonna show you as I hit a few shots with it. Some other things this eye crossover has, it has miraging steel face, and basically that is a, a thinner face to shift that center of gravity down to give you a little bit more lift. And you need lift with a club like this because it's so strongly lofted. These eye crossovers come in a two, three, and four iron. I actually have the three, and that sits at 20 degrees, the two iron being 18 degrees that four iron being 22 degrees. So very strongly lofted, so you've gotta get some lift up there. And again, that hollow body construction, that weight towards the bottom is going to allow you to do that. It also has micro max grooves in the face, going to hopefully give you a more consistent launch profile and spin profile out of these clubs. Again, in my testing already, I found this to be 
a super consistent club, both directionally as well as distance wise. Now there are a few different shaft options for the eye crossover. I personally went with the Tor 2.0. This is Ping's own shaft. This is a graphite 85 gram stiff shaft. There also is a counterbalanced option and a few other options which you can explore on Ping's website. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hit some shots. I'll show you what this thing can do in its stock configuration. And then we'll shift a few loft and lie settings around and see what happens. All right, guys. Well, we are going to go off the tee here to start. And this club really is meant to go off a tee. It's really meant to be a driving iron, a fairway finder. In fact, I think this could be a great club for those of you who play match play. If you want to put a little pressure on your opponent, make sure you're in the fairway. I think this is a great use for this. So we're going to go off the tee here first, but we will, of course, try a few off the deck just to show you. First shot. And boy, the feel at impact of this club is really, really pleasant. And the sound is nice too. You can see that one went out to 205 yards, just a little right of my target there, but that's definitely fairway. Carried 183, my spin 2599, and I've seen it up around 3000 pretty consistently with this club as well. We'll see what it does as we go. Ball speed leaving the club there 120 miles per hour. So for my swing speed, pretty darn good. All right, I hit that one a little bit fat and that was not a great swing. Heading left, but <laughs> As bad of a swing as it was, it wasn't horrible. I'd probably find myself maybe still on the fairway, if not the first cut. And again, that's why I got this club. Ah, much better strike there. Nice little baby draw that I really love. High penetrating ball flight. As you can see, this is a very consistent club when hit well in terms of distance. Carried 181, ball speed 119. Our spin was up there around 3,000, and we rolled out to 202. Now getting back to the spin there, I don't know about you, but I hate stepping up to those 200 plus yard par threes. For a guy like me that doesn't swing it that hard, those are very imposing tee shots. But a club like this, I feel like I could get the lift and I can get the stopping power and really feel a lot more confident standing over the club. Next shot here, let's see if we can get the swing speed up a little bit and that carry as well. Whew, I love the look of that trajectory. Just a little left of center. We did carry it a little further there, rolled out to 211. Ball speed 124, so that's exactly what we wanted to do. Guys, what do you think so far? Let me know down in the comments. I'm really liking what I see out of this thing. Love how straight this club is. Love the way it sounds and feels off the club face. And I really like the way it looks looking down at it. Like I said, it's not one of those chunky hybrid looking irons like the gapper or those stealth dhys this thing's really nice there's a good one again just love that piercing trajectory and <laughs> talk about consistency guys that's 205 right where we've been ball speed up a little bit 121 carried 183 our spin 2749 all right, guys, that was definitely my best one there. Woo, just missed the center. <laughs> and again, that's what this club is capable of when struck in the middle. Ball speed 124, way up there. Carry 190, rolling out to 212. I don't have my roll settings really pressed like some of these uh, golf stores either, by the way. I try to keep it pretty rational. Uh, total distance 212, our spin there 2600. All right, now what we're gonna do is just to show you a couple shots off the deck just to see how this club reacts. The leading edge of this, like they did with the 230, is supposed to provide a little better turf interaction. It's rounded at the leading edge. And again, I find this to be a pretty good club off the deck. Let's make sure the ball's in the right spot. Off the deck as well as off the tee. Still gets up in the air really nice. That's the problem I've been having with my three wood. It's not necessarily gonna carry as far, but still I'll take that 196 yards right off the mat with not a super swing there. Let's see, 
Another one here. A little lower trajectory, but still, that's perfect for a layup shot to get you into position. 193, and again, I'm not taking a massive whack at this thing. So I find it to be off the deck really good, really performs, and again, I can hit it better than that three would. What I'm gonna do now is we're going to adjust the loft settings. Hopefully you can see that, but it's built right into the hosel of this club and the tool fits right in there. And so that to me again, very, very cool. So on this club, you can see the markings there. You can go up or down. I'm going to go to 20 and a half degrees, which is plus 1.5. And that changes the lie angle from one and a half upright to now zero. All right, so let's make that adjustment. We should get a little higher ball flight. We know 205 was basically our average with the rollout. Now, it definitely looks a little bit more open. I'm gonna take the same swing, hopefully, and see what happens. Ooh, yeah, look at that. That's definitely higher. Definitely higher trajectory. Carried to about 185, and I'm getting about the same distance on that shot. It wasn't all I had, but about the same distance, but better trajectory, certainly, and spin up there. The spin is up, 3,099 RPM, ball speed 120. So a shot like that, even though it carried the same and rolled out the same, I'm gonna have way more stopping power there. Let's see, let's try it again. <clears throat> Push that to the right, <laughs> but again, pretty forgiving iron as well. And we did lose a little distance on that shot. We are rolling out to 198. It carried, uh, let's see, the carry was 180, ball speed 118, spin up to 32.74 RPM. So let's see if we get another good one. Still, I think that could be in the fairway. Wouldn't be, too, wouldn't be in the trees, certainly. It might be in the first cut again. And that one, <laughs> that was a toe swing. You can see I still got distance out of it. Still rolled out to 201. You, you can see the right to left swing on that ball, the arc a little bit more pronounced, but still that's fairway. I would say that's gonna be in the fairway. While they say this club is really meant as more of a player's profile, player's performance, honestly, I think it could work for mere mortals like us because it is a forgiving club. I pushed that one but still not horrible. Distance gonna be down a little bit. That's a good one there. That should be right down the line. That's my fairway finder. Hit it harder, went further, carried 195, total 216, spin 3000. I would say that loft adjustment didn't hurt us. If anything, it could have helped us with better spin, better control my right and left shot there, not so bad. So let's go the other way. Let's go the other extreme and take this baby down to 18 and a half and see how that changes things. I assume the spin will be down. I assume the forgiveness may be not quite as great. And I gotta think I could potentially lose distance, believe it or not, because I'm not getting the lift or the spin out of it. But let's see, here we go, 18 and a half degrees. Ooh, <laughs> well, it wasn't a great swing, but uh, again, of all the, of all my misses, that was the worst. <laughs> it's kind of, it was a bad swing. Spin 2219, I don't think we'll even talk much about the stats there. Let's just go to the next swing. That's better. As you can see, a lower trajectory off to the right, Push that one to the right and distance, mm, more or less about where we've been. Ball speed 123 though, so higher ball speed, it got more rollout, less carry, 175 yards to 201, spin 2575. Ooh, thin on the club face. <laughs> Didn't get off the ground on that thin shot. But it is in the middle, it's still a fairway finder. We rolled out where to what, 173, carried only 127. 
bad launch angle. Everything was bad about that shot. I've got to hit a good one to really show you. All right, that's a better one. But you can see, just not getting that same flight. And I think distance is hurting because we're not getting enough lift out of that club. Ball speed 120, carried 163, total 195, spin down 2049, more like a driver spin almost. All right, that's a pretty good one. That's about all I've got in me before I get too tired swinging this club. Right down the middle. It's a fairway finder, 213. 213, carried 185, ball speed 125. So there's the difference there. That's great apples to apples right there on a shot that had the same ball speed, 125, I actually carried a couple yards less there and it rolled out to 213, whereas the other one was 216. So very interesting. So to recap, love the fact that you can change the adjustability and really dial in what works for you. I didn't even show you all of the settings. I just went to the extremes there, but there are settings in between as well. I think there's eight settings all together, which is pretty awesome. With my own results there, I think going up to 21 and a half actually suited me because I got more lift, still got the ball speed, still got all the good things and more of the things I wanted like spin and carry. If I was playing a Lynx course fast and firm, I may go down to something like 18.5. I might lose a little bit of that forgiveness left and right as you saw that first shot I hit with this thing and I think that third shot not amazing and I think the miss was a little bit more pronounced but you're going to keep it under the wind and that could really potentially help you when you play a course like I did in Ireland you got the wind blowing howling right in your face and out of the box at 20 degrees this three actually makes very good sense as well and then like I mentioned before they've also got a two iron option as well as a four iron option I will say I did try the two iron I originally went to buy that and my results were more like what we did here when we changed the loft to 18 and a half, I just couldn't get the lift in order to get that penetrating ball flight. So I think the three is really like the best of all worlds. It's like the club kind of in the middle. You can still go down, you can still go up and you can experiment for yourself. This is the new club in my bag, guys. What do you think? Let me know down below and check out my I-230 review. Those irons that I tested, I really liked as well. Ping is doing some fantastic things and they've got the G430 line coming out here in like springtime. So stay tuned for those. I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.